welcome everyone. No this more is days Halloween. till Halloween, Halloween, <laughs> Halloween. <laughs> no more days till Halloween, my fair lady. <laughs> Hello. Do you want to play a game? What's your favorite scary movie? Be afraid. Be very afraid. You're gonna need a bigger boat. Here's Johnny. The power of Christ compels you. The power of Christ compels you. Whatever you do, don't fall asleep. Welcome to Talking Horror with Jim and Nikisha. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jamie. And I'm Nikisha, and this is Talking Horror with Jamie. And Nikisha. Where we share our love for spooky things. Oh my god, it's Halloween! And talk horror <laughs> through the lens of human behavior. <laughs> Welcome, everyone. First, I was scared. Then, I was excited. Yes! <laughs> Great, great quote. Welcome, everyone. No this more is Halloween. days till Halloween, Halloween, <laughs> Halloween. No more days till Halloween, my fair lady. <laughs> and if you don't know where that is from, you better get ready, guys. Also, where the hell is Michael Myers? If you're asking these questions, then maybe you watched the 1982 science fiction horror film, Halloween 3, Season of the Witch. No, no fancy Michael music here, okay? We're going off the grid, off the rails, into the season of all of the witches in oh, this God. crazy movie that I'm very excited for us to discuss. <laughs> so this movie was written and directed by Tommy Lee Wallace and it stars Tom Atkins and Stacey Nelkin. And it is the third installment in the Halloween chain and the only one that does not feature Michael Myers. Now you guys probably knew this and by you guys, I mean Brian and Jamie, but upon my Wikipedia search for all of these things, I saw that the original concept of Halloween was only supposed to be the first two being connected and then the ones afterward were supposed to all be anthology. It's supposed to be an anthology series. So each one after the first two were supposed to be just different stories that happened on Halloween night. And they wanted the fourth one to be about um, ghosts. But because this one did not get great reviews, they brought back Michael Myers. And so here we are. Also, uh, well, it's, it's Halloween, but on the 22nd of October, uh, thanks to Matthew Wood's calendar, that's the anniversary of Season of the Witch when it was released. Wait, so we're recording this on the anniversary of yes. Season of the Witch? So I didn't know well, if we could divulge that information. <laughs> no, that's fine. Uh, yeah, I did that on purpose. Uh -huh, totally. Okay, great. Yeah, 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 definitely. <laughs> definitely did that on purpose. I thought you did because I was like, "Oh, that's so smart, Ryan!" Like, it's the no. anniversary of it, and we're recording it. No, right I'm now. not. I'm not that smart. That's good though. I'm glad. I'm glad we did that. That's very exciting. Yeah, it's awesome. So obviously, <laughs> uh, <laughs> heavy spoilers for season of the witch, but not the other season of the witch, Halloween three season of the witch, because there is a separate movie that is of the same name that I did not know and have not watched. Uh, so make sure you're watching the right one with us. And Jamie, give us all the trigger warnings. I, what even? I don't even <laughs> know. Um, so, the, like, okay. Um, there are masks that murder people who wear them by melting their brains. Yes. And, and turning them into bugs and snakes. So definitely your bug and snake trigger warning here. Oh, definitely. For definitely. Sure. Yeah. Um, I would also say... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> it's just, just so like, silly. The, the, it's... Oh, man. Um, there, There's like a... There's a gross like face explosion that happens. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm, someone mm -hmm. like immolates themselves someone really gets their eyeballs pushed in and it looks like their face is being ripped off but then you see their dead body and mm -hmm. it's fine 
mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and then two people like fall on the floor, presumably to be dead. Also, there's androids. So if you don't like robots or androids, true. Um, also scary. Uh, there's android body parts that still attack yes. you. So if that, if you don't like that, um, paganism. If you're not a fan of my robot, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, paganism. Oh, yeah. Uh, Stonehenge. I, <laughs> I think I'm running out of triggers. I mean, like the mass murder of children. Oh uh, yes, is that's is, important. Uh, is very heavily alluded to. Good point. Oh. Good point. Good point. Do I miss any weird? Um, no. I don't think so. But like, bad accents, softcore porn. There's a lot of that in this one. Uh, yeah, it's just, you know, well, we'll get into it. We'll get into it. Anyway, producer Ryan, if you have some words for us, please give them. <laughs> yes. To us. Happy Halloween, everybody. We are so excited to have watched Halloween three season of the witch for you. Hopefully we watched it so you didn't have to. Um, <laughs> however, um, you can find us on social media, wherever you get social media at talk horror pod, follow us on TikTok, Twitter, um, all that stuff, Instagram, but uh, happy Halloween. Happiest of Halloweens. Uh, before we get into all the things, guys, I finished House of Usher. Did you guys finish? We're almost there. We okay. started the last episode. Yeah, we're almost done. Yeah, I'm, I'm very excited for the opportunity for us to fully get into yeah, break it all down. of it and break it down. But it down. I, I mean, Flanagan does it again. And I'm just so excited that he exists in this world uh, because it's fantastic but have you guys watched anything else outside of that yeah we've been up also plowing through the goosebumps tv show on hulu yeah how is that mm-hmm. we're really enjoying it i think it's, it's really good. fun yeah nice is it anthology or is it all connected like one story it's all connected okay. but like they you know they definitely pulled from the different stories of i mean goosebumps mm-hmm. to then like bring it it's pretty it. similar in some ways to how it Usher kinda, is doing stuff. Yeah, it actually really Oh, is. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, cool, where it's cool, like cool. each episode is like based on a story, but it's mm-hmm. still like there's still a main plot that's driving what's happening. Yeah. Love that. It's uh, Netflix or some... Hulu. It's on Hulu. Oh, okay. Fantastic. I got to get into it. There's just so many great things. And then there's now... so much to watch. There's so much, and I'm uh, subscribed to AMC Plus, which has like all the horror things. So I'm oh, nice. really excited to. Well, AMC Plus it. owns Shutter, so a lot most of that stuff is Shutter stuff. Oh, oh really? okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. Fantastic. Well, I'll go back and get Shutter then as well. Awesome. Well, let's get into season of the witch. We need a plot summary. So excited to hear. Oh how this plot no, I forgot. Goes. I forgot. I have to do it. <laughs> Watch the plot. <laughs> Happy oh. Halloween, producer Brian. I know. Um, trick or treat oh, to you. Man. This is yeah, I know. A trick. <laughs> Hopefully, you can remember it all. I know. Oh, Nikisha, I will say I'm deeper into season eleven of The Walking Dead because of you. <gasps> I'm finally finishing it. Okay. I know we talked about it, but I think I'm episode eight or nine. There's like twenty mm-hmm. something, but like I'm I'm getting there. Okay. What is that? The last season. Yeah, this is the last season that aired. Okay. Like, la- I forget. Maybe it ended earlier this year. I don't remember when it actually ended, but uh, yeah. I'm finally watching it, and I'm enjoying it. It's always Yay. it's a it's a good binge. Yeah, I love that. Well, yeah, let me know how it ends and if it's worth it to keep. Well, you already said it's worth it to keep going. So <laughs> I think so. I think so. I All mean, right. if you've already committed this much time to it, like you might as well keep going. Seven seasons, and it's only eleven. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right, Jamie, you have your timer ready. I do. Producer Brian, are you ready with your knowledge of this movie? D- sure. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So two minutes are on the clock. Ready, set, go. So this man escapes from somewhere from the woods. Anyway, he finds himself in a hospital um, and he's raving that the world's going to end. They're going to die. Everyone's going to die. It's just before Halloween. And somebody breaks into the hospital and basically kills him. Um. 
the doctor, uh, who is an alcoholic, who is separated, uh, divorced from his wife, um, for some reason becomes a little bit more interested in like why somebody died under his care like this. And he ends up meeting the daughter of this man, and they and he's holding a mask. And the whole world is like very, the whole country is very excited about these three masks made by um, what is it, Shamrock? Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. um, <clears throat> so they're very excited about that, the the silver Shamrock. And so they're like, something is off about this. So anyway, they follow, they make their way to, to the Silver Shamrock, kind of this town, um, the Santa Mill or something like that. This town that uh, essentially is the, um, is the factory. They, uh, everyone keeps dying around them. They're trying to figure out like what is happening. Um, <clears throat> there are a couple other people at that town who had orders and the orders didn't go through. Whatever the case may be, um, Silver Shamrock is also getting all of the kids excited at 9 p.m. on Halloween night to, like, watch their giveaway. Um, they can win something if they have a mask, but there's a medallion on every mask. And what we end up finding out as people keep dying, what we find out is that um, they stole a piece of Stonehenge that has this power. And they're basically putting Stonehenge into all the medallions, and they're going to essentially, like, as a sacrifice, because they're witches from the Celtic era, basically, um, they're melting kids' heads and turning them into like um, ghouls, uh, turning them into uh, snakes and 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 rats. Uh, excuse me, snakes and bugs. Um, and the guy ends up escaping. The girl he was with is actually an android the whole time. And then he tries to get the TV station to turn off the commercials, and they don't. And the movie ends. The end. Halloween 3 season of the witch. And that's the plot. And all the bodyguards are androids. All all the bodyguards. And you know, I dig that explanation better than, you know, watching the actual movie. So, (laughs) let's get into it with our first segment, Likes and Gripes. And now, our Likes and Gripes. Okay, so have you guys watched this before? And oh my God, I'm sorry if you had to watch it a second time. (laughs) So we have not seen this, but I will say that we did know that like this was not with Michael Myers. We Mm -hmm. We understood that like this was the anthology series they were trying to create. It did not do well. And on TikTok, we've seen that like this movie has a like cult following people like say it's underrated they really like it um you know so on and so forth so we had some i guess maybe expectations or background knowledge but this was our first time watching it okay i will say the same as far as i knew that michael was not in this so i didn't i i went in not um expecting expecting him in it and again with the knowledge of it being an anthology. So, Brian, since you already started and you never start, why don't you go ahead and give us No, no, no. I think Jamie needs to go first on this one. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. You know I love a Jamie rant. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, man. Um, so, yeah, no, I haven't seen this film before, which is weird because I've seen – I don't know why. I used to watch – there used to definitely be movie marathons of, like – all of these right. and I used to watch them and I would rewatch like one, two, skip three, four, five, six. And then those were the only ones that I've seen. Those are still the only ones I've seen aside from the reboot, uh, Halloween by, um, uh, well, I guess both reboots of Halloween, the Rob Zombie reboot of Halloween right. and the sequel and then the newest, uh, the 2018. Trilogy. Yeah. Um, and I, so I weirdly have like a lot of nostalgia for those, for the four, five, six. And I always heard, like you said, that three doesn't have Michael Myers in it and like wasn't as good. So I just kind of skipped it because I was like, I just want to see this like story, you know, exactly. the trajectory of Michael Myers and what's happening. Um, not that, and I know that four, five, and six are also not great. This movie. <laughs> If we can call it that, is terrible. I am even shocked that like it has a cult following. Um, I it totally didn't land for me at all. Zero percent. 
Um, we watched, we did watch this movie in two parts. So like we watched it, like we started it like late one night and then continued it the following morning. Mm -hmm. Um, but like, I, I was just so bored. This movie is really boring in like the first half of the movie. And, Mm -hmm. and like they're, they're posing a lot of questions, but like boring, boring, (laughs) boring. (laughs) It just. I just didn't care about anything that they were posing, about anything that was happening. The questions I had were like, why does this doctor care this much? I kept getting confused by the fact that he was a doctor and not a detective of some kind. Because like the the way that he involves himself in these things makes no sense. Um, and And then I was confused about his relationship with like, uh, the the mother of his children because um, I was like I, I was like clearly I missed something because I'm so <laughs> utterly bored by this movie I just like I missed that they were divorced I because I thought that he was cheating on his wife and I was confused <laughs> just in the in the morning after I was like I am so confused about like what the setup for this movie is and it doesn't yeah. really get interesting until they like get to the factory in my opinion or like when the (laughs) when that silly lady is holding the microchip and like stabbing at it with her little pin and it fires into her face and i'm just like oh that's weird and it gave me real nope vibes yes Um, her whole mouth situation so spoilers for nope uh Yeah. yeah and i was like oh that's like gross and like a really interesting effect that they've done here practically kind of uh mostly Mm -hmm. but like why why i just i just i don't get it i don't get why for most of this is my ultimate question um yes why the androids uh like when did he make all of them i just yeah this movie is super boring to me um i'm gonna have that song stuck in my head forever i've just been singing it throughout in, in I mean, it's just house. London Bridge. Yeah, it is. Right, right, right. But, about, but replace it with Halloween. Yeah. And then I'm more invested. And then I just kept singing it at Brian's face. Hey, what is the Halloween? Halloween, Halloween. 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 And, and, and Halloween. like, this is what I, I'm like bobbing back and forth while watching it. Um, yes. But I, I don't, I don't get it. I also, I will admit that I had, I spoiled the plot for myself. So like, I spoiled it before watching the the second half of the movie um, because I was just like, where is this all leading to? And I needed, I I even, despite, I I did that because I was like, (laughs) I'm confused about what the first half of the movie is. I need to reread what I just saw and watched and like read that after watching the first half and then started the second half the next day and still was like, I don't remember what I saw. Like none of it seeped into my brain enough to retain it. Because it, it left, like, zero impression. Um, yeah. No one's particularly good in this movie. Uh, it, like, yeah, it's just, like, a bunch of, a bunch of, like, rocks all talking to each other about nothing. And It just doesn't, um, it doesn't feel realistic in any, nobody's connections or relationships seem authentic or real. And, no. yeah, I agree. Yeah. Just talking, um, talking rocks. And then uh, the the sequence at the end with Stonehenge like activating and like making the circle. The effects are are wild, and by that I mean abysmally lacking. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it just like I was like, did he disintegrate? Like, what did he disappear? Did Stonehenge take him to like another plane? What happened? What happened to the big bad? He just right. he turned to stone, and then I thought he was like gonna like turn into ash and like melt or something. But then he disappears. So like what, what, and that's totally mm-hmm. different. I would have bought that he turned into like an explosion of bugs because right. that's what right. that's what the thing is doing. <laughs> but then none of that happens to him. So like, what is the power that Stonehenge holds? And and why did it right. not have anything to do with what happened at the end? I just, yeah, I, I surprisingly don't have a lot to say about this movie, except I fully 100% trust my 
my child intuition of not ever watching this as a young person because I don't think that I could have handled it then because I certainly can't handle it now. Yeah, I agree. I'm going to take a sip of wine and I'm going to piggyback off of what you said. <laughs> Hell yeah. Oh, God. Okay. And then he looks at the camera at the very end. I hated that. Oh, my God. Just keep acting for like five more seconds. The movie's almost done. Don't look at me. Also, I don't care. But you know, somebody in that writing room was like, this is going to be the ultimate the ending. Wall. Exactly. I was Someone like, thought that I that was the greatest thing on the face of the planet. <laughs> also, can we, we need to also discuss the fact that this is so meta that they like put Halloween, the original Ugh, one, on the TV and like the it. bar on the TV. Or Multiple times. Yeah, I hated that so much. Yeah. They also used, like, they used the soundtrack occasionally, but I was like, is the soundtrack playing on the TV because they're turning on Halloween? Or are they, mm-hmm. like, using the soundtrack proper? Like, I couldn't actually tell, but it didn't yeah. really make any sense because the soundtrack is so, like, what's the word I'm looking for? Epo- eponymous? Synonymous? I don't know. You think of Michael Myers when you hear the soundtrack, so why Synonymous. play the music yeah. if he is not here Mm -hmm. what's the point right yeah i wonder what it was like in like what was this 82 yeah it yeah this it's wild 82 i i will say um jamie to your point about the beginning being boring the first thing that i put in my notes was that the car crushing the guy in the suit was probably the lamest kill i've ever seen (laughs) in horror movie uh, history because that's exactly that's exactly what I said. He just it, it barely tapped, it tapped him. Like, it tapped hi, YouTube him, people. Like, We're recreating it for you. He gets tapped, and then he just whoop, falls uh, over. Also, I mean, it's he, not he was an android. But, th- okay, so that, that also, because all of the androids, when they die, they're all, like, spitting up their, like, yellow goo. Yes. He's the only one that doesn't, so you're, like, you don't know that it's an android at the beginning of the movie. Exactly. But that's bullshit, because then exactly. you're not being consistent with, like, how they die just to misdirect us to think it's, like, some sure. weirdly strong human man chasing after this guy. Like, how... Yes. How stu- how annoying. That just makes me mad because you you change it for the rest of the movie just to be like, ha, we tricked you, but like you you didn't trick us. You intentionally misled us so that we right. wouldn't guess that they were androids, which I right. never would have anyway, even without the goo. But also because it's it, you, it's called Season of the Witch, and I just don't want I don't understand how people decided to put robots but with like witchcraft. Yeah. Cause that just doesn't seem like two things that would go together. And if it could go together, this did a terrible job of trying to put those two well, things together. I'm interested in a film about robot witchcraft. This was not the one that I wanted uh, to, exactly. to, to be about. Um, I think that this, if this was about robot witchcraft, that'd be much more interesting than what we got. <laughs> Yes, I agree. So, Brian, put that in your list of things that we were always like, if we're going to redo it or rewrite it. <laughs> yeah. I actually think this movie would... I actually think there's a world in which this could be an interesting remake. Mmm. I, I don't know to how... To yeah, but... Don't, yeah, just, don't, yeah, don't fair, wish fair. that into yeah. existence. Fair. Sure. I mean, I would, still, I, I, I would still watch it just to see. Just to see yeah. if someone if they, could make the connection. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but... The, the the point Jamie made about not caring about the characters, too, also because the doctor was just such a crappy human being. He's, like, sexually harassing his nurses. He's, like, hooking up with all these people. I felt so uncomfortable watching him and Ellie do anything together. It, it, uh-huh. was, it felt wildly inappropriate um, because of just the, how the age difference of how, of how they looked. Um, Brian, to your point about accents, one thing that I put, this is a terrible Irish accent. (laughs) It really was. It was bad. And then, like, so then when he's, like, finally admitting what they're doing, and then he, like, slips into an Irish accent, like, and then he goes back into his English accent, like, I I get that that was, those are just, like, weird choices that, like, they made, and they, like, honestly, I should, I wish, this is going to sound insane, but I wish this movie had leaned more. The movie, okay, 
We all know, and it's been said on here many, many times, I do not like 80s movies that I have no nostalgia for. Mm -hmm. I, I don't. And I think that this fits right into the pocket of, like, you're taking this too seriously, and it's not fun. If you had leaned right. more into the absurdity of it, like, it just feels like it's taking itself so, so seriously. I, I, I fucking hated this movie. Like, like yes. truly, a, I, I can't describe to you how much I hated this movie. And I went in with expectations, really wanting to like it. You know, and but because like, oh, cool, people seem to like this one. This is the one that people don't talk about anymore. This is going to be like a fun 80s romp. And this was not the fun 80s romp I wanted. I thought that it was just like a truly bad movie. I would have rather, if this was a black and white movie from the 50s, mm -hmm. I would have enjoyed it more than it being like, because it, it's almost a throwback. I get, I get what they're trying to do here. It's this throwback to like these like 1950s serials or like the like these like weird little movies that are like that would be like you know Martians versus Santa Claus or, or something like mm -hmm. that. But this one was just like man missed the mark on so many levels because they're trying to combine like the weird softcore porn of like 80s like like. <coughs> late 70s early 80s movies when the 80s were kind of figuring out what their decade like tone was movie wise but it, with with like with like that like that um that like serial type of uh storytelling noir or whatever it is and they and honestly tone aside this movie misses every single mark to make it interesting and grounded and i'm not saying that it needs to be like a serious drama grounded but like it's it just feels so disjointed on every single level that it is unwatchable it is more interesting as a history lesson on the like the the, the franchise of halloween than it is at all like as a film a movie sucks yeah. well yeah brian my the very last thing i wrote on my notes was that if this was a, a bad movie to be funny you know like you said like i would accept it but they're trying to make it uh, too serious and yeah. it isn't it is it good because of that like way way too seriously <laughs> and, also, and I, also no go for it no 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 go ahead oh I, and I get that people probably watch this in an ironic ironic way and they're just like oh this is like stupid 80s like I enjoy that I do not enjoy watching 80s movies like that because I have no nostalgia that way I that's not how I like 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 I, I just that's not how I like to watch movies and, and that's that's a me thing and I recognize that. If somebody else loves this movie, if somebody else has a ton of nostalgia for this, if someone has so much fun watching this movie, like hell yeah. There's a lot of I have a lot of likes for this movie. But like the gripes are so overwhelming. This is an unwatchable piece of garbage. <laughs> Sorry. That's like the harshest I've ever heard you talk about. Uh, yeah, I think that's the most uh, aggressive. Uh, no, the, 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 the two, my, right now, if you were to ask me what my two like least favorite movies are, it might yeah. be this one, and as we all know, uh, Fifty Shades of Grey. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. That yeah, movie. That tracks. Yeah. That movie that just, tracks. you know what? I, I, I would argue that these two movies have a lot in common. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so 50 shades of gray oh wow yes. and halloween 3 season of the witch have a lot in common one is the softcore porn of it all yes two you have human you have very uncharismatic human beings trying to like have some sort of relationship mm -hmm. three the movie is trying to do something very serious and isn't leaning into like the camp of it all um it just like it doesn't know what it actually wants to be or it has the wrong idea of what it thinks it should be and it is just and the acting is stale and terrible and like the endings are both stupid and like things are happening in this movie both movies and i don't believe that the characters that were presented to us even if one ends up being an android at the end and we'll get to that because that doesn't make any sense like at all i actually think that twist undercuts the entire movie if that Agreed. twist didn't happen i would have enjoyed it more and we'll get into that sorry i'm just like waterfalling at this point but no, like no, like i think that 50 shades of gray and halloween season of the witch have a lot more in common than you think venn diagram it i believe me 
Yeah, this. I mean, that's not even a parlor talk. That's like you in the hot seat spilling no. the tea. Okay, that's, that's the, not the this. That, this is just a co- movie conversation. This isn't yes. even parlor talk. This isn't a hot right. take. This is just like likes and gripes. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. he's very passionate about his his likes and gripes. Um, there was something that you uh, mentioned. Oh, um, the Ellie thing with her being a robot. I think <clears throat> that's also what I put in my nose. It made mm. no sense that she was no. helping him get no. out of the thing, but she was a robot the whole time. What's the well, point? So What's then, the what was point the point? Of that? Because, like, I... the way I said, Jamie said this best. He's a doctor. We, Jamie and I kept looking at each other during this and being like. He's a doctor, right? He's a doctor, right? Like he's a, he's a, why, why is he so involved? What is he doing here? And then something I hated was like, what the movie had to do was make him special. The movie had to, why does Silver Shamrock care so much that like they created this fake daughter to bring him, because he was interested? He they Like, why, why did that android daughter bring him back? And then why didn't they just kill him? And I, I like, I, like there was no reason for them to keep him alive, and like you know, except for the fact that this movie needs a hero, and that he's and that Silver. That's what I also didn't believe about this. That I do believe in weird James Bond movies because James Bond is special, and there's an ego to the villains that they capture James Bond. Like I get that, but he's just some random random doctor. Like mm. I didn't understand why he was so like. And then the, the him and then her being the android makes no sense. Jamie and I were cracking up, <laughs> crack because like, and then I yelled at the so TV. Silly. I was like, "But why would she bring him there? It doesn't exactly. matter. He exactly. wouldn't have known. She he didn't have any clues. Like, what are we doing? Sorry, I have to stop. I have to stop right away. <laughs> You're just saying what we're all thinking, thinking about it, yeah. honestly. Because that's, it that's the truth. Make any sense. It doesn't, it doesn't like, make any sense. We talk a lot about how much we like and really honestly require rules for our movies. Yes. And this this movie just doesn't give a fuck about anything, let alone rules. And I think that's also, that's like part of why it's just so hard to watch is just mm-hmm. like, yeah, it's just doing whatever it wants all the time. And it's like, we're asking questions to try to get a deeper understanding, but like they don't, there's no, there's no answers to be found here. No. no. And for some people, I, I'm sure that's a part of its charm. I, I get sure. that. Yeah. Just like this unhinged, like romp <laughs> and the history that it's like, this is the one without Michael Myers. Like mm-hmm. I, I totally, I was really excited to watch this. I really thought I was going to find like a hidden gem. I was like, Oh, this is an eighties movie one off that I actually really like. And it just ended up being this like, hole of sadness like i mean well i'll go like i love i think the opening credits are fun i think the masks are super cool listen i like the song in the halloween commercial we have our bad 80s father yeah um i like some of the silly stuff like him wiggling in the skeleton mask out of the chair like Mm -hmm. the, the mask flip onto the camera at the end is insane and i loved it um I like that him being a piece of shit Mike still he'll, will get his kids killed. That his wife didn't listen to him. Like, I love that. Yeah. That, mm-hmm. I, I thought that was great. I like that the little kid's name was Little Buddy. The uh, other sales guy's kid. Yes. Um, but, like, I thought that that's, you know, and, and a lot of other people, like, I'm sure enjoy all of my gripes. <clears throat> like, it was just, like, also, this. you want to know my biggest gripe? This is my biggest gripe. <laughs> this is going to sound insane. But here's my biggest gripe. Yes. If they believe that this is going to be the last Halloween, why do they have so many overstocked masks? Mm-hmm. Why are they still doing production the day of Halloween, like a yes. couple of hours beforehand? Like if this was an, a business that believed that it was the end, that they were going to like give all these sacrifices and stuff, and they have mm-hmm. all these masks... And all of this, the factory would have been done. All the shipments would have been made. Like, like this, it doesn't make sense. Like from a business standpoint, unless they were, tr- I, you know, whatever the case may be, maybe they were trying to, say, you know, maybe the numbers need to show they were doing more so that people wouldn't be questioning them. But like that made no sense. And then he goes and says, <clears throat> the quote is like, um, uh, the volatile chemicals. Like you can't go in there. The finishing touches are volatile yes. chemicals. I'm like. 
Oh, the masks you give children, you finish off with volatile chemicals, and that's something everybody accepted in the moment? Like, mm-hmm. <clears throat> like I get it was 82, but, like, honestly, like, the fact that this doesn't seem like a running business that is going to, like, this is the last... Like, it's not like it's a storefront and people are coming in. You know what I mean? Like, this right. is the factory. The factory is done, manu- and all they manufacture is those three masks. Like... And how do they have so much marketing money that they would, like, every single kid in the whole country would have these masks and there were no other Halloween costumes? Like, I don't, like, all of that is just, like, the logistics of all of that without them trying are just absolutely fucking insane and nuts. And I hated it. I I didn't even try to explain it. And listen... That's fine, and I'm like double backing because like if you like like I couldn't get I couldn't get through it all. Bottom yeah. line is that stuff didn't matter because the movie was boring as he- uh, it was awful. Boring, boring, no, yeah. boring. <laughs> the story, the acting, the effects. Literally, the only effect that I even enjoyed a little bit was uh, when that lady's after face off. Yeah, that was the be- That was one of the better ones. <laughs> yeah, but uh, anything oh. else? No. Oh man, joy. <laughs> Pure joy is watching my wife laugh at a hand choking him when it's clear like the woman is like out of it's frame. underneath. <laughs> and then it kept coming back and I... Jamie was literally like, I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> oh my God. But like do something different. Like we get it. We fucking get it. Stop. It was... It just kept going. It just oh, all made no, this so all made no sense. It was like they thought of every kind of twist, but yeah. th- leading up to it, it just made no sense for the twist to happen. But they were like, this will be cool if this was the twist. And yeah. this will be cool if this yeah, was the it twist. Was they also tra- not cool. They also tried to make it like a Willy Wonka situation. Where like, you're in the, the mask factory. Like, how exciting, right. everyone. And it's like, uh, oh, okay. here's another thing. Did you all pick up on this? That when she gets out of the shower... She, like, has the little towel. And then she grabs the comforter. <laughs> she, like, grabs the blanket and starts wrapping herself in it. What are you doing? Who does that? Then, I like, guess... how are you going to sleep? Your whole bed is wet. Yes. The whole bed is wet. Plus, Nikisha, she's an please. android. Nikisha. Nikisha, please. It just made me so upset. <laughs> because there was nothing that led to anything afterwards. It's not like he came in and they started having sex. It was its own scene. Yeah. For what? Yeah. For what? For what? For what? <laughs> Literally, you have a little t- a, a towel and then you're going to put, oh. And as someone who's like super clean and it's like that was just made my skin crawl. Because oh. why are you using an entire comforter <laughs> to dry your body? You are in a hotel that has multiple towels. And, and then it was like, oh, I'm cold. Oh, you, they just wanted to show her naked body. Softcore porn. Hate it. But yeah. You, yeah. I, 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 I'm just like, I love how there was a scene where a little kid's head melts and turns into bugs and snakes and the thing that made our skin crawl is her like drying <laughs> off with the bedding and that's being in your 30s yeah <laughs> that's so silly oh my god but it's so stupid because oh, there's just so much oh I, it, yeah this is chaotic that is that is chaotic that is sociopathic chaotic behavior Oh, yeah, it's the android okay. and too. We really are. We're, we're shitting on this movie. But I do have to say, again, probably because they plagiarized it from London Bridge is Falling Down. Yes. The song is an earworm. The little video is, it like, it sticks with you. Like, uh, we have a friend who has earrings that are of the little television with the pumpkin mm. in the TV. And, like, mm-hmm. that's, like, that image is definitely, like, <clears throat> feels iconic so there's something there's something yeah to give it but <laughs> throw literally throw everything else away so actually <laughs> jamie that's an that's an excellent point because i know these masks before even seeing this movie yeah yes. like but also that beautiful image at the end with all the kids like you know picking out the mask first of all kids would mo- so many kids would be picking out their masks like day of but like you know, those three kids kind of, like, with the red background and, like, mm-hmm. on the hills and, like, like some of this movie is actually gorgeously shot. Mm-hmm. Like, really beautiful. 
Um, which is a shame. Yeah, because like we've all said, everything else was just like all for naught. It was it was awful. And just again, the acting just really made me so upset. There were so many moments where it just didn't it just didn't pull through. And you know what? It um I I can understand people liking the like the OG uh, Evil Deads because when if you guys have been listening to us like when we first watched it I was like I don't get the the hype about this but it all still kind of it made sense and then as it progressed on it took itself less seriously and it leaned into all of the sure. kids and so then it was like oh now I'm invested because you guys have figured out your shtick and then and you made it work for the for the chain but all this was just everything against it the it, like we said just the story and the acting and everything so i just personally i, I don't even understand i can't even understand um the the liking of this the cultness of this because with a movie like evil dead even that was easier to understand of like i, I can see why people like lean into this sure. more so than this one so yeah i and- yeah, I don't get it. And as someone who has seen like four, five, six, I think that those movies also kind of take themselves a little too seriously, which is mm. why they're like fine. But like, I, but they also they take themselves seriously. But there's also the element of like they're bringing some some pretty wild things into these movies as they continue. And I won't yeah. spoil them because I don't I don't think either of you have seen four, five, six. I've only seen one, two, now three. I haven't seen anything, bef- and then I've I haven't seen anything from three through those Rob Zombies. I have not seen, but then I've seen twenty eighteen and ends yeah. and kills. Yeah, mm-hmm. kills. And, and did ends. you watch Freddy vs Jason or no? Not yet. yet. Wow, that has nothing to do with any of this because that's Michael Myers. No. I'm sorry. No, but you're just trying to stay positive. I get it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you're like, there's gotta be something redeeming. There's but, gotta um, be something here. But I, don't, I mean, like this just like was so. And maybe if I rewatch four, five, six, I would feel similarly because I haven't watched them since I was younger. But like, mm-hmm. I feel like yes, they they similarly take themselves really seriously. But like, they're also at the same time taking on concepts in other horror movies that like are so off the rails that you're like you're having fun with it if you will even if you know that it's like not great this i feel like doesn't do that yeah and as someone who loves james bond this really felt like a weird like like awful awful like like secret agent movie but he was a doctor (laughs) that's bad yeah, right? that that actually, it feels like a bad Bond movie. It feels like one of the bad ones that, like, people don't really, you know, like, highlight Yeah, as yeah. Much. And, and, and I think part of that is, like, the weird androids, the weird villain, the villain who, like, gives his entire spiel to this doctor for no apparent for reason. For no reason. Um, and, and just the doctor's ability to, like, be in all of these spaces <coughs> all the time. Because that's yeah. what you think about when, I mean, like, you know, a secret agent is, like, able to get enough information to then, like, sneak their way into the thing. And, like, that's what this doctor is doing. But, like, why? Why does he give a shit? Like, yeah. that doesn't make any sense to me. That's not his and, like, job. And and what Bond has over this is that the Bond movies, at least from, like, Goldfinger through, like, the last Pierce Brosnan movie, don't take themselves seriously. Like, you'd, like... I love them because I love the tongue in cheek. Even the the later Connery ones, and obviously all the Roger Moore ones, maybe except for Live and Let Die. But like, I, I this movie just like is taking itself like a serious Bond movie, which makes it worse than that. <laughs> but the, the the, but um, what? But I know for a fact that like the lead actor in this like was the sheriff in like My Bloody Valentine 3D, and like you know he has like he has like a horror cult status because of this, obviously. Mm-hmm. But like, yeah. we'll buzz your girlfriend, woof, you know? Well, literally, woof, big woof. I, mm-mm. Mm-mm. Okay, anything, anything else we want to discuss? <laughs> um, <laughs> Besides being horribly, uh, did you get any good by quotes, it. Brian? Yeah. God. They're gonna kill us, all of us. The the, the, oh, the, the wife. We had the subtitles on. What the wife says on the other side of the phone is truly spectacular. At one point, she says, the kids won't even remember your name. Amazing. Oh, my God. Uh... Um, uh, and then uh, when when she goes, 
where do you want to sleep, Dr. Chalice? And then he goes, that's a dumb question, Ms. Chalice. Hated that. Uh, there's that whole monologue uh, that the guy does, but the, my favorite that stuck out was, he invented the sticky toilet paper. Oh, yes. I looked over at Brian's face, and he was just like, ugh. <laughs> um, oh, my God. There's that, I know that this was not the case in 1982, but there's this amazing line where they, it's a voiceover, someone saying like, yeah, you know, it's what separates them apart is, you know, he always paid attention to the details. Meanwhile, they're showing like the native, the, the, the stereotypical racist oh Native American God. depictions. Yeah, yeah like, that was so It was weird. 82, like, we see it now that they like, you know, were blind to that or whatever. Anyway, that right. was just like, that felt very yucky. Um and then, oh, and then when the doctor says, this is my favorite, I think it's time for the Marines. <sighs> oh, also Get another gripe, a huge gripe in this movie is no radio station with, or TV station with the amount of money that Silver Shamrock probably paid for those ads and they've no, been they're marketing not, they're it. Not them. They're not pulling no. them. They're not pulling <laughs> any of them. Actually, the studios pulling the commercials actually felt less, felt very unrealistic. Yeah. Absolutely. Because then it's like they're changing the, the he's, he's channels like, I too. I have no proof. You just got to believe me. Yeah. He's like, I'm, I'm a doctor. Like, uh, what, what are you? What? <laughs> they're just going to believe this random man <laughs> who's calling on Halloween and be yeah. like, okay, yeah, we'll we'll pull it. Also, yeah. it's like, how Why? many channels is it on? I would assume it's a prank. It's on Halloween. It's on Halloween. Yeah. They could have. Oh, yeah. the, I'm sure the station got a million calls being like, oh, you know, is your refrigerator running? Well, you better go catch it. You know, like, some shit like that. <laughs> <laughs> is that your best prank call? No. Yes. That, yeah. Yeah. I used to listen. Did anyone watch, listen to the Jerky Boys no. growing up? No. No. No, I, I had friends who had Jerky this. Boy cassette. Oh, it's just like the Jerky Boys just like did like prank phone calls and re like recorded like them. Crank Yankers, you remember that? Yeah, show? sort of. Crank yeah. Yankers, yes. <laughs> I, I never owned one, but my friends had them. I know it sounds fake, but like my friends had them, <laughs> and like yeah, the, they'd be like, ah, uh, yeah, some pretty racist, horrible stuff on there. Oh, um, but God. they, yeah, as far as I remember. But anyway, the Jerky Boys, great. Great. Uh... All terrible. Okay, fantastic. <laughs> Let's move on <laughs> to our next segment of mm, brains. brains. Well, no there were no brains in the makings of this, brains. but <laughs> we're gonna try. Oh, um, so I don't even remember what part this was. I think it's when the head witch guy was talking to the doctor and uh, I don't know. But my question is, what is Thorazine? Because they had like, somebody had given that to somebody to make them like sleep or something. Yeah, I'm trying to even remember when they said it too, because I do remember right. them saying it. Um, oh, was it, was it in the beginning when the doc, when the, um, oh, you're right. It was because they thought in. it was, uh, a psychological or what, like a mental breakdown that the, yeah. the guy was, having. Um, yes. and I wish I knew more about like, what's like an appropriate amount of milligrams for things. Cause yeah. you, you hear that in doctor shows all the time and I'm just like, I think that would kill someone, but whatever. <laughs> um, but Thorazine is real. Uh, Thorazine mm. is an antipsychotic. Um, oh, okay. And so it helps with like, uh, like folks who have diagnoses like schizophrenia, <laughs> sometimes bipolar disorder. Um, it, uh, like in that situation, it being per it being used would make sense to like calm kind of somebody. calm someone down in a way, or or help somebody relax um, yeah. if they if they are um, agitated. Um, right. Plus, I'm guessing it also makes sense if that guy is like, they're going to kill us all. Like, he's presenting maybe as paranoid. They might jump to a conclusion that it's some kind of psychosis. So that I can see where the tracking is of use of name dropping Thorazine there. OK, that and makes the sense. Rest of the movie falls off. <laughs> right. <laughs> and then everything else. Mm, pretty, pretty fictional. Uh, OK, so. Also, well, we didn't even mention the fact that the doctor has a fucking drinking problem, guys. Oh, yeah, we didn't even talk oh, about that. Oh, yeah. Because I kind Wait, of don't remember. 
like the who references that like his wife his wife, yes. the nurses tell the android woman where to find him. It's like, oh, you can probably find the doctor in the bar. And the oh, and the yeah. wife, and then the wife is like, oh, you're gonna go do surgery now? And like, oh my god, yes, like it's uh, it's awful. But that led me to a question. <laughs> um, so can we talk about why you think, in your opinion, people choose certain substances like alcohol or other kinds of drugs to abuse in an attempt to like deal or cope with life problems as opposed to like seeking professional help or assistance from friends and family. I mean, like this guy's a doctor. He could absolutely afford therapy, but he's like <laughs> drinking, you know? He is just, yeah, he can't, you know, I don't really know what kind of doctor he is anyway. But, uh, <laughs> I mean, I think like, oh, like for some people using substances, especially like kind of what you're describing, if someone's like in distress or they're experiencing something that's like, really difficult for them or maybe they experience trauma um yeah or just like you know i am i i'm not a doctor but i can imagine like being a doctor in a hospital in particular is probably really overwhelming and stressful and like just like non-stop very intense um and i think like a, using some kind of substance like alcohol for example is a form of avoidance it's a way it's like an escape you don't have to think about like all of the stress that you're dealing with on a regular basis as opposed right. to like <clears throat> you know like therapy is is not really avoidance <laughs> like that's it's kind of the opposite you kind of have to grapple and face like Deal more with directly issues. with yeah with the stuff that's like coming up for you and that can be super uncomfortable for people and and really difficult so like it's and also I think it's like part of our nature is that like we don't necessarily want to lean into uncomfortable things. Yeah. Um, so I think that too makes it difficult to uh, like <clears throat> lean on supports. Also, if we feel like we're not totally understood by our support system, like mm -hmm. for our our doctor here in this movie, maybe he doesn't feel like supported or or heard or understood by his wife um, for you know whatever reasons, and so like. Maybe he feels more isolated as a result and then leans on alcohol as a way to, like, cope um, yeah. as one example. But, like, I think I think that tends to be, um, you know, why somebody might use substances is, like, it's, it's an escape from having to deal directly with, like, the things that are really painful to deal with. And, like, can, just thinking about it causes a lot more harm than, like, not having to think about it. For sure. But also, he's definitely in our worst dad's hall of fame. Absolutely. Yeah. Good. Okay. He said, I'm going to go uh, investigate with this woman that I don't know because she's pretty, and I'm going to yep. leave my kids and yeah. uh, to, and to figure this out. Ever. And not call ever. And now they don't know his name. Yeah. Because and now they there. don't know his name. <laughs> <laughs> okay. My last question is... Speaking of just a divorced household and such, uh, who do you think suffers the most trauma in those kinds of households? The absent father or the mother taking care of the kids or the kids themselves, just in your, in your opinion? Yeah. I mean, for one, I'll say that, like, you know, heterosexual people aren't the only people getting divorced, so it could also be... Other, You're correct. Other dynamics at play. But, yes. I mean, I do think, like, you know, something important, if if some if someone's in, like, a, a strained relationship of any kind and they have kids and they're, they're considering their options in that moment, if it's, like, strained to the point where it's, it's likely not, you know, going to work out from here, but they're thinking about staying for the sake of their children, that ends up causing way more harm to children um mm -hmm. so i mean i think it's so hard because obviously it's traumatic for everybody involved but i do think that it's it is really impactful on children regardless of age like there's like adults who like find out that their parents are getting divorced and like that still absolutely has an impact on them so i don't yeah. even think age is necessarily a factor um but i think that like it is it's it's really hard also to like communicate that effectively sometimes um, to children um, 
again, of any age. Uh, but I think that that definitely has like a particularly lasting impact on the family unit, like how they might view their own relationships moving right. forward. Um, so, yeah, like I, I would probably say children. Yeah, but I do like what you um, said about people staying in situations where they probably shouldn't and how that can really um, affect people sometimes even more so because they're yeah. under in that in that dynamic you know the kids are witnessing that inside the household as opposed to if they were separated you know yeah and it's hard like obviously co-parenting is hard and Mm -hmm. um you know like figuring out what that new dynamic is going to look like being in separate like if there's shared custody and being in separate locations all of that is really challenging um but again it's like children are super perceptive like Mm -hmm. you know don't don't doubt their ability to like observe and like take in and absorb the the things that are happening around them whether you think they're like noticing it or not um Mm -hmm. because again it's like they're they're smarter than we give kids credit for sometimes and they're able to notice that like you know that there might be harmful dynamics at play and again like how does that also impact um themselves their identity their relationships moving forward yeah Great. Great answer. That's all that I have for this. Yay. Uh, so let's move into Rotten Tomatoes, which I'm super excited. I made sure yeah. I didn't see this. To I'm very see excited for this one. It's the Rotten Tomatoes game. <laughs> um, okay. Well, I mean, let's do this. What do you think this has on Rotten Tomatoes? 18. <laughs> yeah, like 15. God, it's um, going to be something higher. You said 18 and 15? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think this... What would be the perfect score for this movie? Anything below 20? <laughs> I um, think. <laughs> this movie has a 50%. Which, like... Makes I'm sense. It's been nice in some doing ways. this podcast with y'all. <laughs> oh my but I can't recover from that score. That's so. absurd. That does not make sense. Who? Well, How? This is the way I look at like an older movie like this. They're not pulling like the old reviews of the time, so I'm sure there's a lot of this. It's only it's 50 percent based on 36 reviews. If I actually look through this, my assumption. Um, is that like a lot of these are like written now with like more context yeah. you know what i mean like these are not like the anyway which i think you should be able to revisit a movie don't get me wrong but anyway this is a 50 percent. the audience score is a 28 hmm. percent okay um but it's it's laudable deviation from series formula notwithstanding halloween 3 season of the witch offers paltry thrills and dubious plotting dubious <laughs> dubious um so what do you think this has average wise on letterbox on letterboxd excuse me oh god 2.5 i'm just gonna go two solid uh 2.87 which brings it to a 2.9 yeah that that tracks yeah for people <clears throat> liking it yes um so yeah that's uh that's the rotten tomatoes on the letterbox but uh yeah i mean i get it i totally understand but also boo earns boo. Boo, boo. well boo, boo, yeah because there was one i forgot what chain we were like going back and uh checking all of their ratings and one had like was definitely below the 50s but i still could not imagine that it what we were talking about that chain of movies was worse than this yeah i just what I'm what I'm seeing and, and you know, someone who is coming to these slashers late in life, like people have their favorites obviously and like they recognize that they're bad and they have nostalgia and they lean into it. But man, a lot of these like slashers are really hard to get into if you have no nostalgia for them. Like I get it. not that this is a slasher per se, but like um you know, like but like like for instance I had a blast watching the Friday the 13th movies, but like, I, but like, 
I recognize what they are and a lot of them kind of lean into it. But then like I just have a hard time like watching some of those other slashers in general. Like yeah. I don't know how I'm going to feel when I watch like some of the Freddy stuff is not enjoyable for me. I don't I think some of the like but I haven't finished those. Anyway, besides the point um Let's do the four S's. Yes. Well, also speaking of Freddy, I forgot to mention that we had a movie night um, that I hosted and we watched uh, Nightmare, the first one, because a lot of people mm -hmm. hadn't seen it in the cast. So yeah. everyone is like gung-ho about watching the second one. So maybe we'll try to go through the... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Freddy's... The second one feels like a fifth movie. Yeah. <laughs> like, I feel that. That second one, talk about breaking every rule that that Wes Craven set in the first one and the second one. Anyway, that's yes. we'll, we'll get into it. But those we'll at some discuss. Point. Yes. Yeah, okay, let's do the four S's. Skull, scare, shakes and suggestions. The talking horns four S's. <laughs> um Jamie, why don't you start with this with this romp of a of a ride? <laughs> uh, oh god, don't don't be mad at me internet. Um for skulls, I'm giving this a 2. Uh because there's no this movie might as well have been written and all acted by actual mm -hmm. androids there's no Yikes. human listen humanness mm -hmm. to if, this if, film listen mm -hmm. i support the writers and the and the and the i support the writers and the actors and all these strikes and stuff like that but at the end of the day ai could have written a better movie than this <laughs> And I don't think any, I don't think many people will disagree with you. So, oh, God, um, for scares, I'm giving this a one, uh, one to all the bugs and creepy crawlies. But like those, those separately outside of this movie scare me. So it feels like cheating to even give it that one. Sure. sure. Um, mm -hmm. For shakes, I'm I'm giving it a one because I literally couldn't remember what happened in the first half of this movie, or that the doctor was a doctor, or like who and why and what. <laughs> All the five W's. <laughs> Obsessed with all this. Nikisha? Yeah, one's across the board, man. Uh, I really wanted to dig it, but nope. All right. I got a, a one for skulls, a zero for scares, and a one for shakes. And my suggestion is you want a Halloween movie, watch Trick or Treat. Yeah. You want a so Halloween good. movie, watch Halloween. Halloween. Oh, Any yeah. of the Halloweens. <laughs> Yeah, any of uh, them honestly yeah just just steer steer clear <laughs> steer clear from the witches and the bugs because mm -mm. it, it makes no sense it's like people just had like a hat and they said everyone just throw things in and then they pulled <clears> out <throat> hmm witch hmm, yeah bugs hmm, robots yeah let's make hmm. it work <laughs> stonehenge <laughs> right. I that was the biggest jaw drop I've ever had in my life was just it being mentioned in this movie. Also there was that news report about Stonehenge exactly, earlier yeah. and I was like honestly this movie was already so off the rails I I didn't even like I I I, I, I actually feel stupid that like I didn't see that coming cuz that was the <laughs> only clue that this movie there's only literally one clue and it's yep. that and I was like yeah. this is anyway. Man. Yeah. <laughs> Um, All right. Well, that ends our episode. Also, happiest of Halloweens, man, guys. I, wow. As producer, as producer, I want to apologize to all of our listeners. I wish we could have been more positive, more exciting on Halloween. But you know, we took the chance. We took the risk. We took we this Halloween movie that we had never seen. And honestly, this makes Halloween two look like a masterpiece. I don't like Halloween two as well. Mm -hmm. But like this, I'm just like totally flabbergasted and i hope you got entertainment out of this episode listeners right. because like this i wish we had been more positive but like that's the that's the risk that when you roll the dice you don't know what you're gonna get i was just gonna get... say no no risk no reward okay mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. that's true <laughs> and we've seen it now we've all seen it now and and we yes. can say that we've seen it and okay. we can say to other people don't seen it Yes, like you said, we watched this so you didn't have to. <laughs> Yo, man, I'm so sorry. Just listen to us talk about it. And if you loved it, I'm so happy that we exactly. could help you love it more. <laughs> no more days till Halloween. 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 No more days till Halloween. My fair lady. My Silver fair lady. Shamrock. <laughs> 
But now, if if the masks were available, I'm sure you could get them somewhere. Like, I would oh, totally you definitely just have one. You know, just yeah. for shits and giggles, I would get a mask. I would get them to honor one of the worst movies I've ever seen. Exactly. <laughs> just put it on display. And yeah. Yes. Tell 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 its story to the peoples. So yeah. They don't have to. Ooh. Watch but they were finished with volatile chemicals, so just be careful when you put them on yeah. your face. Oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, that wraps up our episode. You can follow us at Talk Horror Pod, P-O-D, on all the social medias, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. Uh, help us get to 20K followers that we're leaning towards on TikTok right now. Yes. We're, uh, yeah, we're on TikTok, we're at, like, 16K right now. Okay, yes. Help us get to 20, guys. Press like. Yeah. Uh, and Brian, where can they listen to us? You can listen to us wherever you get podcasts. You can, of course, uh, on YouTube. Hi, YouTube. Um, you can, of course, find us on Spotify. You can find us on Apple Podcasts. Rate and review us there. Five stars, please. And thank you. Thank you. I keep thinking about that one time where we didn't get four stars because we didn't. I mean, we didn't get five stars. We got four because we didn't like Malignant or some or was something that. Uh, the third <laughs> Conjuring movie. Yeah. Oh, the third Conjuring. And so I'm like, okay, guys, I know we didn't like this movie, but you know, we tried. Yeah. Help but us. Actually, help us out. <laughs> I'm gonna read one of our newest reviews. We said that we would yeah. if you write us a nice review. Oh, so yeah. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that. Um. Ooh. Yeah, let's uh, let's find uh, a, a nice one. Um, <laughs> they all are. They're all nice. Yeah. 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 Uh, this is by uh, Yakli D. Uh, this has quickly become one of my favorite podcasts. The three hosts give have great chemistry. They give in depth analysis. I look forward to them every week and often go back for re listens. Thank you. That's very Thank very you. kind of you. Um, and then uh, I think we have another one. Uh, let me find it. Um, uh, yeah, uh, I'm going to find it. Uh, give me one <laughs> second. Uh, yep, I'm going to find it. Uh, I'm going to yep, find it. Uh, give me one second. <laughs> so we are Here we go. Finding and, finding. and we're looking and we're finding. Um, <laughs> well, I can't find it right now, obviously. Um <laughs> Uh, but, uh, yeah, happy Halloween, everybody. I'm just wasting all of your time <laughs> while I <laughs> kill time to find to, to it. To try to find this. Here, are they so Halloween? Here we go. Halloween. <coughs> this one is from, uh, Great Britain. Mm. Um, Hello. Uh, f f good day. Uh, should we do a bad, uh, Celtic accent, even though that's not Great Britain? Um, <laughs> But I'm not going to because uh, I don't want to stir up any animosity. Um, yes. Amazing reviews. I absolutely love this podcast. It's part of my travel to and from work listening. I love that it's not just the normal hype films that are covered. It's all aspects of horror. With opinions that aren't like the ones you get on some film review channels. They are honest, fair, and if needed, very critical about the content of the film. Well, is this the perfect episode for you, Great Britain? Um, this is from, this is from oh, Scott, hey. the Scott 9121. Mm -hmm. Um, it's very fun and friendly podcast that gives warnings at the start for the content, just in case it may trigger individuals. Thank you for all the hard work on this and keep up the excellent content. Thank you, Scott. We appreciate it. And we hope that this critical episode is one that you will listen to on your commute. <laughs> Happy Halloween, Scott. Oh, that's so wonderful. Happy all right. Well, thanks guys uh, for listening <laughs> until next time. Jamie keeps singing the Halloween song, but hope you guys have a safe Halloween, and awesome Halloween. Halloween. Halloween, no more days on Halloween. It's Not Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye. <laughs>